What is up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Hell's Hall Brawl podcast, and a big shout out to the YouTube crew, everybody taking a look on YouTube. We are now on YouTube, the Brawl Network. All of us are on YouTube. The Bears Brawl are going to be posting their videos there, the Hell's Hall Brawl, everyone to the Dolphins Brawl, to uh, Oakland Raiders Brawl, I don't know, across the country. Fantasy Football Brawl, we're going to be doing it now. House. We are here. Danny is not here, unfortunately. Uh, busy, busy man, and around the holidays, especially as he's not able to join us. So I am joined by again my left-hand man, who is in the building this time. We are here recording live, and we have the co-host of the Fantasy Football Brawl podcast, Luke Barry, on the show. Luke, how's it going, man? I, everything's going great. I flew into Chicago a few days ago, and we went to go see the Bears game yesterday. Um, unfortunately, not the result we wanted, but um, maybe a result we needed to get things rolling here in the off season. Yeah, uh, some major changes coming ahead. Yeah, we can talk some fantasy football later too and see how that goes. But uh, for now, uh, let's get into our experience at the game. Uh, Luke and I were there, sitting up in the United Club. It was a freaking pretty cool yeah. experience. I uh, I lost my some guy locked my phone in the fantasy or in the phone chargers or station thing. That it ended up being free. We tried to cheat the system because the thing was open and uh, it ended up being free that we didn't know. So some guy came up and he was he tried to charge his phone and, and locked my thing in there and I got a free hat out of it. So if you guys want free hats, it's Bears Knit hats. That's how you do it. It's, lock you lock your lock phone, your in, phone the in there locker. and they'll give you a, a voucher for a phone. And we also got the Devin Hester bobblehead too. You guys see right in front. That was pretty cool. But. Um, other than that, we were just kind of enjoying life. We, we were trolling this really annoying uh, Chiefs fan. So, Luke, uh, how was your experience? And how did that Chiefs fan really, really bring your experience <laughs> to light? <laughs> well, I can, I can say from, you know, experience going to games in Philadelphia that, uh, you know, nothing really would phase me at a football game. The guy was just super annoying the whole game. Obviously, the Chiefs are a lot better than the Bears, and, and he had, really had to rub that in, in our faces, right? Um, it was just kind of an enemy territory there, and even though we were being just messing with him playfully, he uh, he took it a bit too far yeah. the whole game. Poking the bear, steady. Yeah, That's what those away fans will do. Freaking annoying. There was an Oakland Raiders fan that we were sitting next to, and the whole time she was uh, she was just like, "Shut up!" Like she just like yeah. Chiefs fans are the worst. Like it was just so bad. From, from Missouri too, she yeah. she did not like anything to do with the Chiefs yeah. from their home state. So. And uh, Blake, how was uh, sitting at home and listening to uh, Chris Collinsworth and Al Michaels consistently tell us that Mahomes was drafted after Trubisky? Well, I thankfully was kind of. Not having to worry about listening to Chris Collinsworth because I was watching the game on my in my phone in my girlfriend's car on the way home for her grandma's. We went over there for Christmas, so I uh, had Jeff Joniak on the radio while I was watching right, the game. Bad, so bad. that made it a little bit more of an enjoyable experience. But uh, you know, Chris Collinsworth, what can you say? The guy is just I can't stand him. Uh, I know he was probably talking about Trubisky Mahomes all night. The one comment he had about Allen Robinson, I'm not sure if you guys saw this morning, but uh, during the game, it was in the fourth quarter, I think there was like eight minutes left, obviously not a lot to talk about because Bears are getting the works done by the Chiefs. And uh, he basically said that A-Rob was like a number three option, uh, and that he was on par with a guy like McCole Hardman and uh, Sammy Watkins. So and uh, I mean, I guess he is right where... Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill are probably stronger options in a passing game, but Allen Robinson, that's just total disrespect because the guy's been a number one guy all season long. He got snubbed from the Pro Bowl, uh, first 1,000-yard receiver since Alshon, and right. uh, Chris Collinsworth kind of really did him dirty, and Allen Robinson responded on Twitter today about it as well. Really? What did he say? I don't remember what he said, but he was like, yeah. he might, like basically something to comment about how he hasn't really been watching. I can look it up for you real fast. But uh, he clearly was not happy, and rightfully so. I think that's embarrassment from Chris Collins. Yeah, to say something I can't believe like he that. would say that. That's did you did you come out that Austin? No, I didn't hear. I actually, uh, I, it took me until this morning. My brother sent me a post to see that Patrick Mahomes counting how many people were yeah. drafted mm -hmm. in front of him. We didn't see that at the game. The soul, dude, soul crushing moment, and I think that was like the first touchdown of the game. I didn't see that one right on because I think I was because I was streaming on my phone and I hopped off to go to like the group message and talk about it because I was like, damn, like this is not looking good. Mm -hmm. Just right from the get go, it just kind of felt like this was off, you know. I mean, Bears first drive, they get a couple first downs there, so it's they like, all right, they're, maybe we're moving the ball here, but then it just everything just came back to the way we've seen all season long. And there was, I mean, I said it on Twitter yesterday. The highlight of the game for the Bears was the Chiefs double doink. 
Like there was like that was the only play where I was like, oh, well, that was actually you know what the Bears might have needed. That. Yeah, that was that funny. was kind we of like oh yeah, and they funny. were just talking about talking about it on TV right beforehand too. They of course the broadcast had to take it up. I mean that was basically what it was. It was Mahomes versus Trubisky and the double doink. Did they talk about Nagy and Andy Reid yeah. though? Because that was another thing. I, I'm really sure they did, but I did not see much of that myself. Um, just because you know when it was like. The, the radio was a little bit ahead of my stream when I was in the car, so when it was like not a play going on and I didn't have them on talking, so I wasn't really listening to them, so I guess I didn't pay as much attention to the broadcast as I would have liked. But yeah. did I really like to listen to it? I don't know. Probably not. not a Chris Collinsworth guy. Probably not. But yeah, let's let's get into the game. Uh, outside of the theatrics that uh, that is broadcasting and, and our little uh, Kansas City friends out there. Um, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't think the defense played that bad. Uh, no. Minus a couple, uh, maybe a couple of miscues uh, that that Mahomes run. I'm not sure what was going on, but uh, KPL looked really good on defense. Obviously on special teams, he had that running into the kicker, but on defense he looked really good all over the place. Nick Krakowski, um, you know, those two linebackers are filling in really well. That the front four, Mac looked really good all game. Yeah, so just getting back there all game. Um, Eddie looked good, so it was just. I mean, obviously you can't do much against Hill and Kelsey, but um, it was decent. I mean, Blake, what did you see out there and, and watching from uh, from at home? Well, yeah, it was definitely one of the better pass rush games we've seen out of them, just because we've seen them kind of go invisible for a long stretch of time during this season. So it was nice to see them pressuring Mahomes, and you know, Mahomes is that generational kind of talent. He's able to make plays on the fly. He's an improviser. It's what he can do. So uh, you would have liked to get him more, just because they had him in their clutches a little bit more, but. You know, I, I really did think their defense did all they could. I mean, they ended up giving up 26 points, but at one point, when you're giving up only 23 points to the Chiefs, like, that's not that bad, you know? You get some good stops. You hold them to some field goals. I mean, they had the one stop finally, and then Harrison Butker comes out and hits a bomb 56-yard field goal. I mean, must be nice. I mean, Bears fans haven't seen that yeah, since Robin Right Gold. down the middle. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. defensively, I think that they did all they could. Offense can't get out of its own way, and we've seen it all year long where the defense just looks demoralized yeah. after the offense just continues and continues to shoot itself in the foot. Yeah, and, and we've seen it time and time again. I mean, there's not much to talk about this defense, but moving forward, Blake, do the Chiefs have an offense that could sustain in the playoffs, or does this seem like a team that could lose because they don't score enough points? It's not as well, unknown as it were yeah, last year. Yeah, they definitely have not been on that same explosive level that they were last year. I mean, Mahomes had one of the greatest seasons ever for a quarterback. 50 touchdowns, over 5,000 yards, and he's on pace to throw a little less than half of that. Like, you know, less than, I think he's at 22 or 25. Well, yeah, he had, 25 the, he had now. The, So that's less than injury, injury too, true. But that definitely without that, you're still at 35. Oh, right, it's definitely yeah, a regression. But um, I think the Chiefs, their defense is starting to look a lot better at the, uh, at the right time here, and obviously the Bears' offense isn't much of a challenge to these defense. I mean, last week you saw them play the Packers. They're in the 20th ranked defense in both rushing and passing, and the Bears couldn't do anything anywhere yeah. really until the end of the game. So I think the Chiefs are potentially getting hot at the right time. I think it depends who they draw, too. Yeah. You know, their, their run defense, I still think, needs a lot of work. And mm -hmm. if they run into a team like the Ravens who just run the ball down the team's throat, they're going to be in some trouble. Oh, yeah. That, that's going to be the one team that will put points up on and keep them off the scoreboard. But, I mean, they, they you know, they have just as good of a chance as anybody versus – the New Englands and, and Buffaloes of yeah, the world. Yeah, definitely. The AFC playoffs are shaping up Should be pretty interesting. decent. Yeah. I think yeah. it's because Baltimore, to me, like I think they're very good, but they kind of strike me as one of those teams that if they do get a bad draw, a team that can defend the run, like they potentially could be yeah, one of those like 14-2 and two teams mm -hmm. that bow out in the divisional round. Hey. I still think the Ravens are really good, yeah. and I think they have a future, and they – will contend for Super Bowls down the line here. But, you know, you think back to, like, Ben Roethlisberger, and Ben Roethlisberger wasn't on the same level as Lamar, but his rookie season, Steelers go 15-1, and one, divisional round loss. So there's teams that have done that before. I think uh, I think as long as the Bills don't draw the Patriots, they could be a dangerous team in the playoffs. So I, I, I just feel like the I, Bills have the number. I was hoping the Steelers would get in, because I think that would be – I would love to see a Steelers-Ravens yeah, match in the playoffs. Game. I think the Steelers – would be one of the only teams yeah. that could beat the Ravens. Yeah, with the way their defense is played just, this year. They just play them, they always play them tough yeah. in that yeah. divisional divisional game. Yep. Alright, let's reel it back in from that rabbit hole. We just went <laughs> that was a hard point <laughs> tangent. Yeah. Woo! Uh, not embarrassed talking. We'll have a right. playoff preview, I'm yeah, sure, before real, they start. Without our team in it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's move into the offensive side of the football. Um, honestly, just abysmal. People were saying it was one of the worst halves of the of the year. But, uh, I mean, that's, that's you know, you got to consider oh, the Oakland Raiders game as well. The, the I mean, the Lions game at the end of the half was, was tough, or was good, but the rest of the half sucked. Um, I, you know, I'm interested to hear you guys' opinion without going too deep into it right now. Uh, where do you rank that in terms of offensive performances for the full game this season? 
for me personally, I know we kind of you talked a little bit. Yeah, I texted you, you last night. Is that the season? worst loss of the season? And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of bad ones this year, but I think that this one just really was like, you said we talked a little bit before we hopped on and recorded. That kind of just felt like the nail in the coffin. Like, it just kind of felt like there was, like, some finality to that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, Trubisky just completely looked horrible. Matt Nagy's play calling wasn't good either, but it just kind of just summed up what this whole season has been, you know? That fourth and 23 where yeah, it was a explains, poor play yeah. call, you know? You have one guy going deep, that's Tariq Cohen, and you have the deep out, uh, and then you have a guy in the flat, basically, and, you know, Trubisky throws the check down, and it was just kind of like, you know, you're down 20 in the fourth quarter, and that's what you decided, like, just throw it up, man. And it was just kind of, like, nothing ever felt like it was really clicking for them at all. It's a collective failure. Yeah. The third quarter, the beginning of the third quarter, was the only resemblance of an offense we've seen. They, they ran the ball down the field, and they still couldn't score. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they got stopped inside the five. I yeah. mean, it was their best but opportunity. They did they move. Did. They moved down the yeah. field. They made a stop. They moved down the field. We said, okay, this could be something. Right. Three and out on the goal line, or four yeah. and out on the goal line. Yeah, with uh, with a one route, you know, a run route uh, play to Anthony Miller and a fade to Allen Robinson. Robinson that wasn't even thrown, you know, well. Yeah. So, I just think the, you know, yesterday we just everyone obviously it's always talked about, but you got to see, you know, this is Patrick Mahomes and this is Mitch Trubisky. You saw the stark differences. Right. Mahomes is just he didn't. I wouldn't say he played, you know, his best game, but he just always has his eyes in the right place. He's making the right decisions. Trubisky's just not. Yeah, and, and we'll get more into Trubisky towards the end of this segment here. But, uh, you know, let's talk about the other issues of this team. The O-line didn't look great, but I don't think they were as bad as a lot of people were putting them out to be. Obviously, Coward got benched for Ted Larson, which was a surprise in there. Uh, when, I, when I saw him in there, I was like, Cody Whitehair, is, is he in there? I was like, no, it's Ted Larson. But, um, yeah, so how, how are we feeling O-line? I feel like... I honestly feel like they've gotten stable. I they haven't gotten. I mean, they gotten better, and I, I feel like they just stayed stable to right. end the year. So, I mean, Luke, I'll start with you. How, how did you like that that offensive line last night? Because I know, I mean, when they ran the ball, they were able to get. They were. They that were. was the only way they were consistently able to move the ball. Yeah. So, how, how did you feel about that offensive line last night? No, I, I totally agree with you. I feel like ever since they made the switch with Daniels and White Hair back, um, the offensive line has been playing better. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like their their defense are getting nearly as much pressure on Trubisky. And it seems like they're having a little more success running the ball. So, um, like you said, I don't, I don't think they're playing great, but they're, they're stabilized at least. They're not, they're not the main concern of the offense at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too. You know, they haven't been good. They've been a below average unit for a yeah. majority of the season. But at the same time, they kind of held their own. And you saw when Ted Larson came in, it kind of gave them that spark in the running game. And that was the drive where they were able to yeah. kind of, you know, Absolutely. put some things together and get down there. And, it's just, you know, collectively, it's just not all clicking at the same time, you know. It's like you got these different parts that are working at all these different times right. and nothing ever really gels together. And it's frustrating because, you know, Trubisky has had these flashes. This offense has had flashes. You know, you go back to that Cowboys game. I mean, Cowboys have obviously kind of really fallen off here hard in the last few weeks. But, you know, you saw what was successful and it just seems that they just forget at times what's successful, and nobody's ever on the same page. I mean, the Anthony Miller play, first play, uh, or it wasn't the first play, but it was on the first drive that mm -hmm. kind of killed it all, where Anthony Miller looked like he had a lot of room, and it, he just didn't catch the pitch, and that's, you know, not paying attention to detail. It's losing your focus, and those are the kind of things that just are not working. Like, you see that it's there on that play, you know. He's got room to run, but then the guy that's supposed to catch the ball doesn't catch the ball, and then... When the guy does catch the ball, no one's blocking, and it's just like just nothing ever works out on the same play. It seems it, it was like the first play of the season was an omen for this. Like we saw it on that mm -hmm. Tariq Cohen play. If you watch the film, he would have scored a touchdown had he caught, yeah. had, he, had he not fumbled that ball, like, or he would at least gain. Yeah, like it would have been a big yards. game for sure. But, they ran that JP Holtz screen, that, that in fake inside zone yeah. screen to JP Holtz again. Yeah, that they worked really well. I wanted to ask you guys: Do you think we'll see Alex Bars or any other offensive lineman that we? That might be our future going Man, forward next week. They're off on Coward and now Larson. It's funny. I think we saw Rashad Coward's family outside. Yeah, we did. Field, so I'm, I'm a bunch of Rashad positive. Coward jerseys. I'm, yeah, I'm also positive. They, they, they did, yeah. Okay. Jackets Jack and stuff. jackets. Oh, and gotcha. we saw Mahomes' brother. I'm almost positive. Oh, Jackson Mahomes, Mahomes, the TikTok too. legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yikes. He's a tall guy. Looks just he looks like really tall. He looks exactly like yeah. Mahomes. And he loves TikTok. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Big TikTok guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right. you know, you can teach their own. Yeah, it is what it is. But um, yeah, I, I would like to see Alex Bars in there for sure. I think he he's earned it. I mean, he looked great in the preseason, and he, I mean, he's someone that could really be good on this line. We might not even have to draft a, a guard 
if he ends up working out, but you can't you can't move forward with Larson and, and uh, Coward. So, you know, and since there's nothing to play for, the Vikings, if they lose tonight, won't have anything to play for this weekend. I think you have to play bars. It'd be silly not to. Yeah, I mean, it, he seems like a guy with a, you know, I don't know if you guys ever got the chance to interview him or whatever, but he seems like a guy with a huge chip on his shoulder. I mean, he went to Notre Dame. He, he suffered a pretty bad injury. Um, so he went undrafted, and the Bears scooped him up. He had an offer from the Patriots. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he turned that down to stay, stay with Harry. That says well, a lot. To stay yeah, with, with Harry, I, I think it says a lot. And I, I mean, I would love to see him get his chance. Yeah, definitely. I, Ted Larson, credit to him because he did step in and he had a solid game. But, you know, every other team that's out of the playoffs right now is kind of in that state of evaluation where they're evaluating guys for next year or, uh, you know, trying to boost stock for trades or doing this and that, you know. And that is something that they have to look at doing because Alex Bars. A guy like him to step up and to become a starting caliber player is massive because, you know, he is on a smaller deal. And right now, the way the Bears cap situation is setting up to look like in 2020, that's the kind of guys you need. You need to hit on these later round guys that have these cheaper salaries, you know. That's why, uh, like the Cowboys, I mean, they obviously have to pay Dak now, but that you see those situations where those guys are hit on small rookie deals and they're able to build those teams around him. And uh, those were what the Bears need. They really need some solid young guys. And... Because they got guys to pay. I mean, Trubisky's not looking like they're going to pay him. Robinson. I don't know how they can. I think Robinson, Robinson has to be yeah. their priority. Eddie Jackson is going to be one of those guys. Leonard Floyd, they might pay. I don't know what, how much that should be just because he we haven't seen the production. Actually, that's a guy we could see. It's a position we could see targeted in the draft. At, oh, yeah, the definitely. End for sure. And, and if they want to part ways with Floyd, they can sign Eddie Jackson and uh, probably sign Nick Kwiatkowski to um, – to, Yeah, um, they need depth. The deal. Outside linebacker is going to be a huge one for them because, I mean – they have Floyd Mack right now. You know Mack's not going anywhere. Leonard Floyd, we'll see what they do with him because we don't really know. Um, and then you got, what, Aaron Lynch is their backup who has he been has to, abysmal been this year. I'm, I'm so tired of him. I mean, he's got like nine, I think, in I think they said it was yeah. seven offsides or That's something. Insane. Between that number. So and I mean, the thing he is, barely plays. He, he barely plays. That's exactly it. Him. And it, for me, I don't know. I'd have to look back on last year, but I feel like he ballooned in weight too. Like, I just feel like That's he looks so bad. big and... It just, he hasn't, in last year he had some production for them, you know, coming off his rotational pass rusher and picking up four or five sacks or whatever he had, that looks solid, but this year he has just been a total liability, it seems. I think they brought him in because he fit with Fangia really mm -hmm. well, because they played, yeah. they play, he played for him in San Francisco, yep. so, but. Yeah, but all right, let's, let's bring it into the, to the discussion, the big, the big talking point here. Nagy and Trubisky, I know we talk about it every episode, but I mean, what what was the the deal with this game? Was it play calling or was it was a QB play? Because there were some decent plays by Trubisky, but there were also some bad plays. And there was, um, I don't think he had any picks, but he had like what 120 yards or something like that. Trubisky, yeah, he he had around that mark. He finished with 157, and I think okay. like 50 of those came what was in the fourth quarter. Order? 34, so he was 18 of 34 for That's 157 so yards, no touchdowns. Cool. No picks. He had a couple close calls with interceptions yeah. as well, though, too. But yeah, it's very bad decisions. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's frustrating because I think Nagy definitely has had his problems, too. But when you're seeing these guys open, you talk about the player where Allen Robinson was wide open for a 46-yard touchdown, and Trubisky just misses him deep. I mean, that's a play that you have to hit as an NFL quarterback. And those are there's been a lot of times I feel like we've seen that where we have had guys open, and the throw just isn't there. So you can't really call that on Nagy's play calling. You know, that's, that's on the quarterback. And Matt Nagy, while his play calling has struggled at times, you know, those are just plays that an NFL quarterback has to make. And I think they're both at fault here for sure. But, you know, a good quarterback changes the entire narrative of the season. Yeah. And I think the, you know, if Trubisky is playing better, um, Nagy's, you know, Nagy's play calling isn't getting as much scrutiny. I mean, we can nitpick here and there, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know, something happens, but... If Trubisky's playing better, it's going to make Matt Nagy look better too. And you know Nagy's doing everything he can to shield this guy, and it, he just has to dial his play play calling so far back. He just can't do anything. Yeah. If anything, I would like to see them run the ball more. I think Montgomery's been kind of disappointing for you know trading up for him this year, but I, I can't just say I blame him. They've had a lot of issues on that offense. He's been good when they feed him the ball consistently. He just hasn't been been consistently, in my opinion. But I mean, I'm curious to ask as well, um, Luke, since you haven't been on the show this season. Do you think this is more, there's two big things, it's, it's Nagy or it's Mitch. Do you think it's more Nagy this year not playing to Mitch's strengths, or do you think it's Mitch um, not performing like a second overall pick? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I personally think it's Mitch not, not performing like a second overall pick. I mean, you draft someone that high, you expect a lot more out of him. Um, especially, you know, the way he finished last year, we all expected him to take that next step. 
Um, you know, even even after last year, I wasn't expecting this guy to be incredible. I was just expecting him to be serviceable, and he hasn't even been that. Um, and while I do think Matt Nagy has some of his own issues, I, I you know I just think the the elephant in the room is just Trubisky, and I don't think Nagy will be able to do much until he gets his his quarterback. All right, and uh, yeah, I mean, I totally uh, I totally agree with you on that. It, it, it for me, it's it's Mitch, and that that interview that we did with PFF last week really kind of uh, opened our eyes to the issues and. How Nagy, this the scheme that Nagy has is one of the best in the NFL, and guys are open and, and they're just getting missed. And it, you know, some of it is the play calling, which is an issue. But Nagy's scheme is not a problem. I mean, he gets guys wide open, the plays work. It's a matter of continuity and, and flow, which it doesn't seem like he's getting. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a tough thing. I mean, I don't you know I don't know what you have on that, but it, it's just it's it's a it's it's difficult for sure. Yeah, it's been a total collective failure. Like I said, you know, it's like you know Nagy's not faultless in this. You know, he's still Absolutely not. yeah. I mean, his play calling. People have been talking about it all season long, and uh, that's going to be something they have to really evaluate this off season because I don't really feel one hundred percent comfortable with Mark Helfrich being the guy that's calling your plays too. You know, I mean, he coached Oregon, and he's never coordinated an NFL offense. I don't think before mm -hmm. that, so I don't really have any reason to believe that he's going to be successful right now. For the Bears, so um, I'm not really sure what they have to do, but something's got to change. You know, there's going to have to be some potential turnover of coaches on that side because what we saw this year, this was supposed to be like you know what the 202. That's like everybody heard all summer. This is like supposed to be the next level, and now you see like Matt Nagy's play call sheet where it's like, what kind of offense are they even running here? You know, and the play calls too. Obviously, you know, you got third and eight, and you're calling screens. Yeah, like that happened three drives in a row. Well, I think, you know, this This even goes back to, like, Andy Reid. People used to say Andy Reid is, is this terrible play caller and his teams are always losing the playoffs because of it. Have we heard any of that with, with Mahomes being a quarterback now? No. A, a I good don't think quarterback, it's been a at all. A big quarter, you know, a good quarterback covers up so many of those issues. Yeah, for um, real. Most, I mean, most important position in NFL for well, a reason. Yeah, but, but, I mean, case in point, you just see it there. Andy Reid has always been a, a bad play caller, and, you know, now he has, a, a, you know, a really good quarterback, and that issue's gone. I just think for the more casual fans, checking out the All-22 film you will really open your eyes to see, you know, how wide open these are. Like, you don't see it on TV. Mm -hmm. You can only see it when you can, when you have access to this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and kind of transitions into the next thing we'll talk about real quick before we get into our best our interview and our best bets. But, um, you know, what are they going to do this offseason? Because one could think, okay, Mitch played himself into the starting role in 2020. But you look at games like this, and you're just like, how are you supposed to have an entire season with someone who's as inconsistent as Mitch? So, Blake, what are you going to be looking forward to them doing at the QB position this offseason? Well, I really want there to be a move, but I'm not very confident that anything real is going to happen. Just because Pace has attached Trubisky to his entire career, basically, as GM of the Bears. And um, I'm just, I don't feel comfortable with any real option. There's no easy fix. Right. You know, you can go out and get a Case Keenum, but we know exactly what kind of player Case Keenum is. Um, Nick Foles, we kind of have a better idea of who he is. Marcus Mariota, no thank you, really. Like, that's not going to be much of an upgrade. And second-round guys don't really have a really good track record of success. So, I mean, it's Cam Newton is the sexy one, obviously. That would be the guy where it's like, all right, awesome. well, I can at least, like, sell myself on that and believing in him potentially being the guy. But That would be like a Khalil Mack-esque. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, like it would definitely. Up and we're not going to expect it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it, it's going to happen. That right. Don't know if it does. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So yeah, I mean, I I want to hope that there's a change, well, but Daniel Daniel's a free agent, so they have to bring in a backup. Yeah, exactly. Regardless. They're going to have to bring somebody in. And Dalton, you'd be doing yeah, Dalton. You can potentially draft a guy too. I think they'd be doing themselves a disservice not to draft a late round guy at this point because what do you have to lose? You know, you're not going to get a full time contributor most of the time when you draft after the fourth round, you know, and they've been lucky where they've nailed some guys like Tariq Cohen and Eddie Jackson, but, you know, that doesn't always happen. You right. know, it, it's a, the NFL draft is a lottery. It's a crapshoot, and sometimes you have to get lucky, and it's there's no easy fix, though, at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I you know, I think the biggest thing is Matt Nagy has to choose his next quarterback, mm -hmm. um, and Ryan Pace has to give him that freedom to, to evaluate hit for his guy. Obviously, John Fox was here last time. It came out that he liked Watson and and Ryan Pace. What you know? Didn't want to went out and do his own thing. Um, but like we said, Chase Daniels gone, so they have to bring someone else in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking for Andy Dalton or Case Keenum. I think those. I two like would be Case okay. Keenum a lot. 
Um, if they're going to go late draft picks, it's probably going to be Jordan Love or Anthony Gordon. I think both those guys are, are two decent guys you can bring in. I like Anthony Gordon a lot. Jordan Love might be a little more raw with, you know, yeah. maybe a project. Um, it's just tough, though. It, like, because I was talking to Luke about this yesterday, but if, if they're going to draft a quarterback, you know, it's got to be someone that, you, if you think Mitch isn't the guy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, they're going to have to develop him for a year and then start him. But if Mitch blows, blows the world away next year, you have a quarterback that you drafted that's just going to be sitting behind Mitch and, you know, who knows when he's going to get his chance to play on if he plays for the Bears at all. So another just just something to, I guess, for the Bears to consider when they're looking at quarterbacks in the draft. But, um, I mean, honestly, I just I want to see them bring in maybe two quarterbacks this offseason. Yeah. It's going to be uh, kicking carousel last year. Now we have a quarterback carousel. Media is going to be all Never over. Training camp, the training camp is going to be insane. Is there any shot they bring in someone like Teddy Bridgewater? I, I I think he'd cost a lot of money, but do you think there's any him shot? Him they would bring him I think he's gonna be more expensive than Cam. I mean, Cam's gonna be 21 mil next year. I think he'll be around 20. Yeah, I, I, that's what I, mean, I think 20 to 25. It depends who's gonna pay for him. But I just, uh, I just don't. I maybe maybe it depends who bites. Yeah, that that's him. another thing. Like it's a bombshell thing that yeah. none of us would expect. But who knows? It, it, depends, it depends. Ryan Peace has been aggressive before. Yeah. That's and he I'm needs saying. to be. It's well, it's about time he said he needs to be aggressive here. Like he was cute with picking Mitch, thinking Mitch would be better over over Watson when the eye test clearly wasn't there. And now it's time you go get a proven vet that can. If you're gonna go get a vet who's gonna start next year, you go get a proven vet. You go go all in, because um, you know you can't you can't buy a cheap vet and just think he's gonna come in and blow the world away. You know it's it's the lowest I'll go in the in the offseason with free agents are probably Andy Dalton. Like, I'm not comfortable with, like, Case Keenum starting or Marcus Mariota or guys like that. Like, it's got to be Andy Dalton, Teddy Bridgewater, or you trade for Cam. Otherwise, these guys are going to come in, they're going to be backups. Yeah, and another guy that I've heard is potentially going to be available, and I mean, it's not sexy, but it would be an upgrade over Trubisky, and that's Derek Carr. I mean, they've talked yeah. about the Raiders potentially not, moving on from that. him. Um, I don't know what his price tag will look like because if you trade for him, you're inheriting a ton of that money. But if they are to cut him, I don't know how much they'd save or if that's really an option. But, you know, the Bears need to explore every possible solution yeah. they have because they went all in when they traded Khalil Mack and the window is still open right now. They're, like This is supposed to be their window to contend and you Probably cannot after, waste more that. Solid years exactly, you know, before that. you're totally screwed by all the contracts that you have to have. and. Um, you can't afford to waste those waiting on Mitchell Trubisky to develop into the guy. And maybe one day he will. I don't think he ever will be what they envisioned him to be. But, you know, I, I, we don't have time to wait around with the roster that they've built at this point. My, yeah. my analogy to Austin the other day was I think Mitch Trubisky could be a Ryan Tannehill where he'll move on and, and probably play decent for another team. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone like the Chargers. Yeah, I can see that. Years. Yeah, that's like... Because we know he has those tools, you know, like we know he can, and it's basically just a matter of harnessing them to some degree, and, you know, he's got to be better too, and then maybe that'll come with experience. Maybe that's why he needs that time, and he becomes like a, a Tannehill, or like, you know, maybe not on the full Drew Brees level that we see today, but, you know, Drew Brees was one of those guys that was drafted second round, he, but he kind of struggled to start his career, had a good year at the Chargers, and then hurt his shoulder, and, yeah. you know, the rest is history now, but... It's we don't the way the Bears roster is assembled. You just don't have time to wait for that kind of production. You need it now. Yeah, it's got to be now, and and because next year we've got a lot of free agents, and next year's going to be a tough off season. So if we don't win next year, a lot of guys are going to want out of Chicago, and that's the difficult part. Do you guys do you guys remember when Ryan Pace said he would draft a quarterback every year? Yeah, he only drafted one. I he actually said he that. said that. Yeah, it's he the, only yeah, drafted one. Every NFL team. He said he said I would, if I would like to draft after they drafted Mitch, they said I would like to draft a quarterback every year. That's that's and a hell of a quote to pull out, man. That I would expect him to if he doesn't draft one this year, I'd be very surprised. He did say that. that, right, Blake? He, I mean, he I don't said know something of that nature. Yeah, he said, you know, it's basically like, a lot of I think guys have said this, but they basically kind of say that, you know, it is their goal to be able to draft. Like it's in a perfect world, they're able to yeah. draft a quarterback every year, and you know, we've seen. Um, him take chances on guys like Steven Denmark or Kareth White or Kareth White who they cut and now he's thriving with the Steelers a little Steven bit. Denmark, man, but I Steven Denmark has not you know, he's been on the practice squad and that's another that's a pick wrong. where you could have just drafted a quarterback and a seen what Ryan, happened, you know. It's a typical Ryan Pace pick where he just drafts from pure athleticism mm -hmm. and traits more yeah. so than football ability. Yeah, and Steven right. Denmark, you know, you hope you wish for the kid, he's just happy to be on the team, but I mean he doesn't have you look at how he stacked up in training camp in the video, it's just, like, not there. So it's, Yeah, and maybe he'll get there, like, one day. Yeah. But at the same time, is if you're planning on taking a developmental guy, 
Why not just take a shot on a quarterback in the seventh Minshew. and sixth round? Yeah, exactly. Kyle Look Allen. at Gardner Minshew. Look at these guys. And Kyle Allen's undrafted, and while Kyle Allen has been pretty bad over the last few he weeks, was, he, was he had some moments yeah. and yeah. to keep the ship afloat to a certain extent. Um, obviously, the wheels fell off later, but you know we're not even seeing him really take a chance. I mean, they, all they've done is they signed Chase Daniel to the most expensive contract for a backup quarterback. Um, you trade up to number two to get Trubisky, and then you bring in Tyler Bray just because he was on the Chiefs and knew the system. You know, you're not really using any spots to really even try to develop a guy, yeah. and that totally contradicts what he said because there's avenues to explore that, and he's just not even doing it at all. He's totally blowing it off. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm a I'm I'm kind of an Anthony Gordon fan in this draft, but we're gonna go somewhere late. I think that Washington State offense is. I mean, that's where Minshew. Came it's an out interesting one for Mike, sure. Mike Leach is yeah, a great yeah, developmental. He's a very smart coach. He's weird, but he's a really smart coach, and uh, I I just think you can bring someone in like that who understands. Uh, that's a more of a spread offense too, and I think they they can um, do some dance. I think he, they can they can develop him into a decent quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I think he's got skills and uh, that that kind of skill set to do so, and it's a it's a proven offense that works. He has um, he I has think. the mental makeup too. I mean, he had some he transferred a few times. I think he went he had to sit behind Minshew there. Um, he waited his turn. I mean, he's guys like that. You know, they're tough. They're proven. Um, mm -hmm. they, they can handle some some adversity. Yeah, and which you love to see. Right, and the only thing is like too with him that is like it's kind of similar to Trubisky where he didn't have a lot of playing time before this year, so it's a very small sample size. But, it's but at the same time, you're not investing that second overall pick or that top three pick in him. So if you can take a guy like that and if they can get him, even if they end up with a compensator or a compensatory pick in the fourth round and they're able to land him more in the, with one of their three fifth round picks, you know, that's a guy that you can potentially develop. And, you know, who knows? He could be a career backup. He could be out of the league in two years. He could be a solid starter. You just never know. Worth, worth a try. Yeah, I mean, the Bears need to hit on something, and they need to explore every chance, whether, you know, signing a veteran, drafting a guy, bringing back Trubisky. It needs to be a competition. Right. And if they don't, then they're just doing their team a disservice. And I think next year, if – Trubisky comes out as the undisputed starter and struggles, the wheels are going to fall off fast. You know that's how you lose if they the don't locker. Have a backup plan. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, like you got guys that are out there uh, working their ass off trying to be contend for the playoffs, the NFC North, and all that. And when you're being held by one guy, uh, like I hate to say it, over time that'll eventually develop some toxicity. You know, Nagy's been really good at keeping the ship afloat this year. You know, it hasn't gotten to that Mark Tressman level thing, but. You know, that only can last for a certain amount of time, I feel. I honestly, do you, Austin, do you think we've seen that with the defense? Do you think at times it looks like they just don't care? Oh, yeah, there, there, there are times when they're emotionally checked out for sure. I yeah. mean, they're so tired of, of going through this, playing well, and then not having anything to show for yeah. it on offense. It's almost like they feel like they have I, to score, but they can't. I know it's a lame excuse, but I kind of, that's what I attribute my Khalil Mack fall off to. Like, mm -hmm. it just, it, it looks like he's like, here we go again, you know, this is yeah, Raiders right. 2.0. Right, and we've seen, uh, I forgot which game it was, but uh, the offense, like, picked it up. Maybe it was against the uh, the first game against the Lions, potentially, where the defense just kind of looked like they were just, you know, getting checked out of it, and then all of a sudden the offense comes out and rattles three straight touchdowns. It was either that or the Giants game, but they score really fast, and all of a sudden, like, the defense has got life again, and they're, like, making plays, and they're yeah. stopping, they're making plays in the backfield, and, you know, you can see that good play is infectious, and... It sucks. I mean, when you're that good of a defense and you have that kind of potential, it's it is demoralizing to see Trubisky come out there and go three and out or calling screens on third and eight or checking down on a fourth and twenty three. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, lots to talk about today still to come, uh, and lots to talk about going into this off season with this podcast. So we're going to kind of move forward here, get into our interview. Um, this interview is going to be brought to you by Fanatics. You guys know what it is: sixty percent, sixty five percent, seventy five percent free shipping. All that and more on Fanatics. You can get this awesome hat that you can see on video at Fanatics. Uh, go to www.thebearsbrawl.com slash fanatics. That's www.thebearsbrawl.com slash fanatics. Get all your gear and apparel for uh, any team that you root for. I'm sure they'll have some really awesome um, you know, deals on there after Christmas. So again, that's www.thebearsbrawl.com slash fanatics. All right, let's get into our interview. And it is with a Barstool personality, one of the finest in Barstool, the Chicago representative, uh, Barstool Chief. So let's get right into that. All right, and we are back. We appreciate Chief for coming on the show. Always great to talk to him. Talk to him, uh, man. I think within the first 10 episodes of the House Hall Brawl, we're on 51 now, so it's been a long time coming. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Always great to talk to Chief, and, and obviously, hopefully, for his sake, our sake, Chicago's sake, 
the Hawks turn it around and, and uh, make a playoff push uh, and get back in there for uh, Taze and Kane. We don't know how many years they have left. So uh, obviously hoping for that and, and better things ahead for Chicago sports. All right, let's get into our NFL bets. Uh, we had a crazy week 16. Blake, unfortunately, caught, got his best bet right with the Chiefs. Um, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So we're all going to give you guys best bets to do if you are a betting person or if you just have a spread thing that you like to do. Um, so let's get right into this. Uh, I'll start with my best bet. I'm going to go Green Bay away. They're still playing for seeding in Detroit. Uh, regardless of if they win or lose, I think they're still going to be playing for seeding next week. So minus 10 is is a pretty – I like that a lot. I like yeah. 14 plus win, you know, points for them. I don't – again, I don't think the Lions are going to score. They just – Lost eight in a row, I think, thing. right now. It's bad. It's bad without Safford in there. So I like the Packers in this one, minus 10. Blake, take it away. Um, for You did best bet for it? Best, best, best bet? Best, All right, best well, best. right now the Minnesota Bears game, the over-under sits at 41, I believe. And I think that under is an absolute lock. Uh, you know, Minnesota's defense has been really good most of this season, and Mitchell Trubisky has been really bad against good defenses. And we all know Kirk Cousins against the Bears. He's really struggled against them. Um, we'll talk about more of that game as we wrap up the show here. But uh, I really think that game, that under, is looking sexy. Yeah, for my best bet, I'm going with the San Francisco 49ers. They are minus three. Um, they're playing in Seattle next week, which you know some people might say, hey, we're, you know, we're scared of playing Seattle on the road. But this week, Seattle just got decimated. You know, mm -hmm. they, lost, they lost another running back, Chris Carson. Um, Penny is out. Procise is out. Um, and I think they lost one of their tackles as well. Yeah. Um, this is for the division title, and I think the 49ers are just going to go in there and roll them. Beast yeah. mode is coming in. He's going yeah. to yeah. destroy that nice mode. defense. I, I love Russell Wilson. I really do. But I just think the 49ers are going to go in there. Hey, I'll tell you Russell. what. If Marshawn Lynch could come back in and, like, actually perform like he did when he was in the league, I'm, I'm, that's going to be exciting. Yeah, that's going to yeah, be really. so exciting for the playoffs. But uh, Luke, started off your uh, underdog. Underdog. My underdog of the week, I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons. They are plus one and a half. Um, they're playing in Tampa Bay. I mean, that's basically a pick them, and, and the Falcons have been playing some really good football. Um, you know, I look for Matt Ryan to continue. Julio Jones has been huge lately without Calvin Ridley. I don't think they can stop him. And just that defense has been playing well, and the Bucks are banged up. Yeah, I, I like that pick a lot. Yeah. Just because, yeah, I mean, Jameis is throwing to who? Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure it was like Perryman, three guys. That Rashad have, Perryman. Yeah, Rashad Perryman and He's then other guys play. I've never even heard of, really. So, I mean, with the way the Falcons are playing, they're playing for their coach right now, and they've been hot, the defense especially. Everything Lydia, I like when it's hot. Ooh, look at that. Cultural references on that's point. It, that's it. Um, for my underdog, I'm going to take the Raiders, plus four and a half here. Uh, they're playing in Denver, but, you know, the Raiders kind of have a sneaky path here where they could potentially earn that six. it's very seed. doable. It's very, very doable. doable. I mean, I think if the Texans have to beat the Titans, uh, the Ravens have to beat the Steelers. But with RG3, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. Happen, and they could rest know. potentially more starters, too. You know, I, I think we know Lamar is for sure sitting, but I'm sure Ingram's, Ingram's be banged up, so, so he might yeah. not play. So, I mean, we'll see. But there's there's it's a doable route to get there, so, and they're yeah. going to be playing it. Uh, John Gruden is one of the better coaches, obviously. We know he can game plan, and he's he's going to have his guys fired up for this one, and I think they're going to find a way to beat Denver in Denver to put, hopefully for them, to put them in the playoffs. That'd be something That'd else. be crazy. All right, for me, I'm going opposite of Luke. I'm going to go the Seahawks, uh, plus three. I mean, I'll I just, Marshawn Lynch, if that, like, happens. And he's you think he plays going, right away? I think, I mean, what he's do you do? He might have to. What do you yeah, do? I guess, right? yeah, maybe, like, yeah. And he knows the offense. He knows Pete yeah. Carroll. So I mean, if he comes in and he's ready to go and he's conditioned and, and healthy and everything, man, I'm gonna be. He's just gonna. I, I mean, the I think the Niners are still somewhat a little banged up inside. So I think he'll be able to do some damage. I'm excited. I man, hope so. Back, I hope so. Man. That that'll be a good game. It, it's a good betting game. Get a while to have three points. You know, once it goes up, you're you're going outside of a field goal. So yeah. yeah. And that's going to be an awesome one, too, if they're, they're battling for the crown, potentially. You know, those are two teams that had a really close game earlier in yeah. the season, which I think ended on a and field goal. goal. Jason Myers, yep. right? Game winner. What's crazy is whoever loses that game will go on the road. Exactly. Yeah. And both of those teams, I mean, Seattle. You don't yeah. want to look, look, the Eagles stink, but you don't want to go to Philly. Oh, you, don't, no. you don't want to play them at the link in the first no. round. I mean, Philly's one of those teams that no matter what, you know, they've been horrible this just, year against bad teams. Them. They're just a team that you know – they're gonna scrap and fight to the very end. Last year, you know what? Were they? That's they so finished nine and seven, made it to the wild card round. Because we found beat a way to scrap, yeah, and found a way to scrap and beat the Bears, and then they were competitive against the Saints in the second yeah, round until too. Until Alshon dropped that ball. Yeah, exactly. They had a chance to win the game. Foles was driving them down the field. Yeah, it's it's just let's just not. Yeah, I mean Philly's definitely one of those like 
I'm Every just saying, year. you don't want to play them. You don't want to lose that game and go to Philly. Yeah, a Doug, the a Doug Peterson coach team is always tough to play against. So, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to be a great game. Looking forward to that as, all, as well. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, preview this game that means absolutely nothing. But, actually, for me and Lucas, we have bets. I'll, I'll, <laughs> we both will win a decent amount of money if the Bears win uh, – if the Bears win on Sunday, so we'll be rooting hard. But other than that, um, isn't for much except for the fact that the Bears are 3-0 and against the Vikings under Matt Nagy. So we'll see what happens. I don't. If the Vikings lose Monday night, you'll be hearing this Tuesday, but if the Vikings lose Monday night, they're not going to be playing for anything uh, seeding-wise. So I think they'll probably sit. There's, wait, why would they sit their starters? Yeah, they would sit well, their starters. Yeah, they they yeah they'd probably seeding. sit their starters unless they want to do what the Bears did last year and still play their starters against the Vikings. But... Um, we, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, Bears going into Minnesota. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what to expect. But, uh, Luke, what, what do you, you want to see from this team uh, on the offensive side and the defensive side of the football? I, I mean, I don't want to beat the dead horse here, but we just – this is literally Mitch Trubisky's last chance to prove to us that he has something Can in he play tank. himself out of a starting position today or, or next week? Or do you think, you know, do you think there, he, there's going to be competition? I don't think he can play himself out out of it. I I think he can make the, the decision to bring someone else in a lot easier this off season though. And you know, if he plays I think he plays bad enough they might they might spring for a guy like Cam Newton. I think he has an opportunity to defend his job from a guy like Cam or someone who can come in and steal his job immediately. Like Teddy Bridgewater as well. Yeah. yeah. Like I think for this game, yeah, testing Mitch Trubisky. I think this should be a game where there is no hold bars for Matt Nagy. Yeah. Come out here with we should the run full some, scope I, of I, the I, offense. Yeah, I want to see some tricky stuff. I yeah. yeah, have fun with just this. Just throw it in. Down. Down. There's, you're not playing for anything. Uh, yeah, if the Chargers yeah. lose today, or the Chargers, the Vikings, they lose today, they're pretty much locked into yeah. whatever seed they get. So, you know, if this is two teams just playing each other because, you know, it's the last game of the season and you have to play the last game of the season, like, what do you have to lose? Just, like, you know, go out there and – see what works and potentially you can draw something up for next year, you know? And yeah. Trubisky, I mean, do we really have faith that he's going to come out against Minnesota's no. D? Uh, I mean, no. if they're coming out with their backups, you know, if they decide to sit like Harrison Smith, Everson Griffin, or Daniel Hunter and all those guys, like, I mean, maybe. You'll see him carve them up and then Trubisky stands. will be all back on the wagon ready to go because he's carving up the Vikings' second team defense. But I just – you know, there's not really a lot to like. I'm just kind of ready for it to be over because this off season is a big one for them, and it, you know, game over. Well, how about this? I, I, that. I would love to see a defensive touchdown, a defensive touchdown. Yeah. We haven't seen one this year, have oh, we? No, man. no, yeah. not that would one. be great. You know? Yeah. And an Eddie Jackson touchdown for old time's sake. I would love for to see that. Too. Right, just, yeah. just give them some comp. They earned it. They yeah, earned it and, this and year. And they for really the did. city as well. We'd really like to end the season on a high note. Uh, eight and eight with the schedule we had. I wouldn't complain about it for the way that the offense has performed. I mean, Jesus, we have... We don't look like an 8 team. We have the 30th no, offense not at all. in the NFL. It doesn't feel like it. We have the 30th offense in the NFL. Somehow we have seven wins. It blows my mind. But, um, all right, let's end this show out, hopefully on a high note, staring up late because I know he picks against the Bears <laughs> every week. Uh, let, let's, do our, uh, let's do our picks and let's do our players of the game. So, Luke, I'll start with our guest first. Close out the show. Give us your, you know, predictions and... Uh, play the game oh man I think this one's gonna be ugly I'm with Blake I, I love the under in this game I'm gonna say it is gonna be a 20 to 16 Bears win in okay. Minnesota okay our player of the game is gonna be Cleo Mack all right I like that I like that and on a high note go ahead Blake for me, I mean, it kind of depends on what happens with the Vikings tonight. You know, if the Vikings aren't yeah, playing for something. anything and they're playing all their backups, it might be a little bit different. But, you know, for the sake of the show and for everything, we'll pretend that all their starters are playing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be an ugly one. Like you said, I think 2016 is a good score, so I'm going to go something a little bit similar there. I'm going to go 2017 just yeah. because I don't think there's going to be a lot of points. I think there's going to be a few turnovers on both sides of the ball potentially. Um it's going to be Mike Boone for the Vikings. Pretty much no matter what, it seems like here yeah. since they've been so thin at running back. And uh, Bears run D is still not bad. You know, they, yeah. they had that middle stretch where they weren't very good. Yeah, but, they got it back. Yeah, and I think I think around 2017, that's, I think that's probably about what it's going to sit at. Uh, MVP-wise, I'm going to go with Anthony Miller here. I'm going to have him step up here. I think they're going to throw the ball around the yard a little bit more just because, you know, they, they don't have anything to play for. It's the last game. It's total evaluation at this point. So, you know, see what your offense can do, and hopefully Anthony Miller continues. Besides last week, he's been really good down the stretch. 
Are you are you saying the Bears will win? Oh, Bears? 2017. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'll go Bears. I'll go yeah, Bears just to end the season yeah. here. Yeah. 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 Whatever. I just want to point out that my predictions are 16 and 0 with me picking the Bears. I pick the Bears every single week, not 16 and 0. I I'm 16 and 0 against the temptation of picking against the Bears. That's what I'm trying to say. Ooh, so pick the Bears every in your mind, time. before the game has been played, the Bears have won every game. I'm 16 and 0 picking the Bears, nice. even though they've sucked this year. So I just want to put that out there. Just kidding. But just for the record. Uh, I'm just gonna go Bears again. And um, man, I don't even know. I went, if I they went, win this game, it's gotta be 17-14. I went with my prediction, thinking that the Vikings would win tonight. Just, just to clarify. You think the Vikings are gonna? I think thinking the Vikings are gonna win. I think, I think so too. Yeah. The Bears have had their number, regardless. The Bears mm -hmm. have had their number. Yeah. So I think they still go out, play tough, try to end on a high note. Um, I like to see the Bears 17-14. I think it's just another ugly game on offense, but they get the job done, which is like blasphemy now. But yeah. we'll have to see what happens. It's. It's something that I, I don't, you know, we'll, we'll be watching, but it'll be, it's just, it's just, I mean, even even yesterday when we went to the game, it's like, man, I wish it was for something. So it was tough to watch. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, I think the Bears get the job done and we end the season on the high note, which would be nice going into a big, big off season for Chicago, the, for the Chicago Bears and Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy. So we'll have to see what happens. But for everyone out there, the YouTube world, the iTunes world, Spotify, wherever you're listening, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Go check out our new YouTube channel. Uh, it's the Brawl Network on YouTube. Uh, you can, I think it's like www.youtube.com slash the Brawl Network or something like that. Check us out on there. Give us a subscribe. You know, I'm talking like a YouTuber yes, now. Give us yeah. that subscribe. Hit the like button like below. Smashing. Hit the like button below. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for everyone tuning in. Luke from the East Coast, all the way out here in uh, Illinois. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we've got our Cutler Shrine in the background. We didn't appreciate him when he was on the team. We appreciate him now. But, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Another great show, Chief. Thanks for coming on. Uh, appreciate it. Let's uh, end the season on the high note and get this win. Bear down. Happy holidays. And we will see you guys after week 17. Merry Christmas and bear down. Nice, Ooh. Luke. Way to, way to just, just get one of these for the people <laughs> listening. That's it. All right. All right, look, I'm gonna need you to try to figure this out. All right, dude, let me just do my. If you